Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isretel here for Renaissance Periodization. Let's try to get some common ground and learn or practice how to design a powerlifting training program. This is the beginning of a video series that we will teach you guys how to design a powerlifting hypertrophy program to put on the muscle size to be strong for powerlifting. Then we'll have a video about how to take your powerlifting designed program and auto-regulate it and alter it and change it, actually running it, make all the uh, necessary changes and updates and to actually have it go super well, teach you how to deload, teach you how to write the next one, and then we're gonna have two videos on how to design and then implement a strength program for the sport of powerlifting. And lastly, the last two videos of the six video series, we'll have a peaking program, one on design, one on implementation. Sounds cool, let's get strong, let's get started. So we're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about here. So first up, what's the purpose of a powerlifting hypertrophy program? Because hypertrophy is for muscle growth, powerlifting for strength. I promise we'll figure that out. Next, what we have to know before we get started in actually building a program. Then we figure out where the training sessions are gonna be through the week, where the exercise selection is gonna be within each training session. Then we have to select the loading range for each exercise, basically how heavy the exercises are select the relative effort to begin with. So like how hard are we going in that first week? And then of course, select the initial volume of how many sets of all that we're gonna do. And then we're gonna talk about what the next video is gonna cover. So without further ado, what is the purpose of a powerlifting hypertrophy program? Well, it's to grow muscles bigger so that we can later optimize in taking those big muscles and making them stronger. It improves your total because bigger muscles are generally stronger, especially when they're neurologically adept at actually lifting. And this doesn't just mean hypertrophy, like we get you big forearms and big side delts and biceps. We mean powerlifting specific hypertrophy, which means training the muscles th that actually contribute most to the three lifts, specifically quads, spinal erectors, hamstrings, triceps, chest, that kind of stuff that actually contributes big time to the lifts. Some muscles contribute somewhat, but less. So we're gonna be biasing our program a little bit differently, which is to say, if you're doing a hypertrophy program for the sake of physique, it's gonna look similar to a powerlifting hypertrophy program, but it's gonna be different in notable ways, specifically with the muscles that we're prioritizing and the muscles that we're not. Next, can you not do a hypertrophy program for powerlifting? Can you just train for strength? Doesn't strength training add muscularity? Well, yeah, it actually does, but not at optimal rates. It turns out it's probably better to grow muscles specifically for growing them or train them specifically for growth, then spend time in strength training, making those muscles stronger and repeating those cycles. That's the best way to get stronger over time because muscle size is such a huge element in strength and training specifically for size grows your muscles so much faster than training just for strength. And that's especially true I mean, just a few muscle size is holding you back from being super strong. So for example, in the bench press, you get a really big ass pecs that respond really well to strength training and they grow fine and they're not a limiting factor. But your triceps could be like a little on the small side. You're really having trouble with lockouts and you're like, well, I wish my triceps were stronger. And then people look at them and your coach looks at them and you look at them and you're like, you know what? Their number one thing is they're actually for their size, pretty fucking strong just not big enough. That's the real problem. So maybe, especially if a muscle group is too small to be competing with the other muscle groups to contribute to a major lift, if you bring up the size of that limiting factor muscle group, it can have a huge impact on your performance, right? Now, once you've notably grown the desired muscles that you wanted in a logical fashion, you've gone through a few hypertrophy phases, at least one, then you can transition to a strength phase, make those muscles stronger, and then later in the peaking phase to take those strong muscles and allow them to display their best powerlifting performance. We'll get to all of that later in the next couple of videos, but for now, what do we have to know before we start designing a hypertrophy program for powerlifting? First, you gotta know how many days a week you wanna train and uh, we'll, we'll to cover the specifics of that. We have to cover what muscles and lifts you wanna bring up because it's totally fine to do a general program. That's, that's completely fine. But a lot of times you're like, you know what? I really need my quads and glutes and hamstrings are fucking enormous relative to my size. My squat and deadlift are shooting up like crazy. Thing is like, I kinda have a bird chest or a, <laughs> it's always people say bird chest. Bird chest is actually enormous. Like uh, <laughs> completely wrong analogy there. But like, I kinda have this little, 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 
chest here and my triceps aren't that big and my shoulders aren't that big. And like, yeah, I can neurologically make the muscles I have for benching stronger and that'll work, but I really just need size. So when you do a hypertrophy program, it may very well be focused on the muscles that do bench press or do the squat or do the deadlift and not just all of them at the same time. So you might do something on the back burner, not train muscles, certain muscles with a lot of volume, train others with a lot to get that particular mix that you need for your body to get you the best possible results. And of course, we need to know what the best exercises are for each muscle group for you to use. And that comes from essentially two factors. First, you want the exercise to have good stimulus to fatigue ratio. If you want to know what that is, if you haven't seen any of these videos before, just go in our search bar or just in our playlist videos, or just go in a search bar and type in Mike Isertel SFR, stimulus to fatigue ratio. You get a ton of awesome lectures. Some of them are short and to the point about what that actually is. But basically like, does the exercise give you a lot of good stuff for a small return on fatigue, small fatigue cost? That's basically what it is. So the exercise have to be pretty good. And here's the big difference between these exercises and pure hypertrophy exercises. They have to have good strength transfer, which is to say that the exercises you choose have to be the ones that if you get strong on them and if you grow muscle using them, it makes you a much better squatter, bench presser, or deadlifter versus those other exercises where if you get big and strong on them, yeah, it makes you a better squatter, bench presser, and deadlifter, but not nearly as much as certain other exercises. We'll get to all that in a little bit more in specifics. So training session assignment. First, if you want the best results for hypertrophy for powerlifting, my humble recommendation is at least four sessions per week for a serious run. You can do up to six if you like, if you can recover, if you have the time, if you have the priorities. But I've talked to some people before that like, I really want to get bigger for powerlifting. I train three days a week or I train two days a week. What do you think? Man, this is not going to be, you're not going to be able to squeeze in enough high quality volume, like working sets that are actually heavy and make you big and strong, um, unless you do four days a week. So four days minimum. Five, it can be five days, it can be six days. I wouldn't recommend more than six because the fatigue is just gonna be excessive. So that's the number of days per week. And the, sh the sessions should address each muscle group slash movement category, like pushing and pulling and squatting, two to four times per week. And of course, with enough time between each session for you to heal for the next one. So if you're like, yeah, I squat, you know, four days a week. And I say like, well, are you healing between sessions? You're like, no, I'm like completely devastated by session number three. Like maybe that's not a good idea. So you want to pulse the sessions in session, rest, recover, session, rest, recover, sesh, session, rest, recover, rest, so on and so forth. And at some point, you know, your proclivity to recover from different lifts is different. So like deadlifting, you may only realistically recover from heavy deadlifting once a week. So you only train deadlift once a week because it's the exception. Benching, you can train two to three, two to four times a week. Squatting movements or leg movements, again, like maybe two to three times a week, so on and so forth. It's all individualized at this point. Now, there's another concern here, which is a little bit different than pure hypertrophy training for physique. Systemic fatigue is a real big deal in powerlifting because you're going super, super heavy, even during hypertrophy. You're going, or quick preview, you're doing sets of five to 10, sometimes five to 12 reps. That's going to take a lot out of you. Also, the lifts you're going to choose are the ones that transfer best to powerlifting itself, which is a lot of compound hardcore lifts, not isolation lifts that have really low levels of fatigue. And you need, as a powerlifting performance uh, athlete, you need to perform well every single session. You can't have sessions where you're like, yeah, I didn't get stronger that session, but I still drove a muscle growth stimulus. You got to get stronger and stronger and stronger. So you can't sandwich sessions together a lot especially sessions that systemically fatigue you. So if you have a really big bench workout, a really big squat workout, a really big deadlift workout, and then a smaller accessory workout, that small accessory workout you can put after one of the workouts, but generally you wanna keep your big workouts more separated. So maybe Monday, big bench workout, the Wednesday, big squat workout, uh, you know, Friday or Saturday, big deadlift workout, so on and so forth. You, you don't wanna have a situation, and I've actually seen programs written like this, where it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, squat, bench press, deadlift, and then rest the rest of the week or you know Thursday something and the rest. That's not a good idea. You want more of a spread as a power lifter because every time you come to train, you wanna be pretty fresh, as fresh as you can be while still getting in the work, right? So quick sample, I'm not gonna blab about it too much because you can just pause the video. You'll see it right on your screen, but we have Monday, you know, we do squats, leg focus, Wednesday bench and some upper body work. Friday, deadlifts and squats. We've got deadlift just one time a week in this example. You can do it more. Uh, squats twice a week because uh, there's a lighter squatting after that deadlift session in the same session. And then Saturday is a bench press and upper. That Saturday session is 
not the heaviest bench of the week. It's uh, probably slightly lighter, slightly less volume. So it's relatively easy to do, even if you're beat up from Friday deadlifts. But notice the rest of the week is very well split up. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, plenty of rest sort of every other day. And then you get another day of rest Sunday, really, really cool off and then get back to work. So four day plan, just a sample. The rest of this lecture and actually all these other videos are going to have samples of training programs designed in them. None of this is dogma. This is not the right way to do it. It's a right way to do it, but you may choose to go a different direction. I just want to give you guys a sample so you can see, sort of be grounded in what this could look like. Because like, if I just, like all the other talks I've ever given pretty much are purely theoretical talks where I teach you guys the principles and sort of tell you how to apply them, but I never really give examples of like, well, this is how it would look like. This is a video in which we give examples, but super important point, this is not dogma. This isn't like you have to do this stuff. It's just a way way of doing. All right. Now we have our sessions in our sample. You could do this many other ways. This is a good one. What about exercise selection? Exercises that you pick for your powerlifting hypertrophy program have to meet a couple of different criteria. First, they should be growth stimulating, which means they have a high raw stimulus magnitude. They got to mess you up because growth isn't the easiest thing to come by. And you have to have exercises that really disrupt stuff. If you're planning on getting huge quads from doing a bunch of leg extensions, it's probably not going to work. You're probably going to have to leg press, hack squat, front squat, high bar squat, real hardcore gnarly shit. It's usually the way to go when growth is important to you, especially when you want it to transfer to the big lifts. Secondly, you want it to be conducive to heavier loading. We want heavier loading, and we'll get to specifically why in a second, because it builds the kind of muscle and the kind of nervous system characteristics innervating that muscle that transfer the best to actual strength performance later. Because if you build a huge physique and it turns out that physique kind of sucks at being as strong as you would have expected, powerlifting is a weight class sport. Can you imagine being like Jack 198 pounder in powerlifting and then you go and actually lift in competition? People are like, I thought that guy would bench way more. What the fuck? Well, if you do all kinds of exercises in really high repetition ranges, that aren't conducive to heavy training, like if you build your chest and you can build a big ass chest with like sets of 20, when you start training for strength, your chest is not going to nearly be as strong as it could be. That transition is going to take longer. It might not take, uh, it might take so long. It might not be complete by the time you actually compete and you won't be as strong as you could be. So sets of five to 12 reps are probably best for building power lifting size. Not all exercises are conducive to that. Like some exercises are isolation movements or some exercises are movements that really only work super effectively in higher rep ranges. They rely on metabolites, so on and so forth. So you wanna pick exercises that are conducive to have your loading and a lot of times compound heavy multi-joint basics are the way to go. Right? It's not a dogma thing. It's just that it meets the criteria that we have to. Next, already alluded to this a bunch, has to have a high transfer to powerlifting moves, which means if you have a chance to build your chest for powerlifting, well, it's just two exercises, just a, just a thought experiment. Dumbbell flies, okay, or wide grip barbell bench. Wide grip barbell bench is better in that instance because it is more similar in every different way that you can imagine to the actual competition bench you're gonna be doing, and it stimulates the pecs. So the transfer of training is probably gonna be faster, simpler, easier, and more dependable. If your dumbbell flies go up by whatever number of pounds, you're kind of like, yeah, it's hopefully this will increase my bench, but I don't know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. If your wide grip bench goes up by like 30 or 40 pounds, you know that shit is gonna transfer and the transfer is easier. There's no mystery about it. It's really good, similar pattern. When you start your strength phase and you switch to competition grip benching or something similar, if you've been doing wide grip, it's the easiest transition in the world. One or two weeks later, you're like, you're like a duck in water. If you built your chest with like dumbbell flies or something, and then you haven't done any benching and you have to do benching now, it's gonna be a weird couple Couple weeks, maybe a weird couple of mesocycles, a couple of months of training of transitioning back to benches. It's nothing you want, so you want exercises that have a good transfer. It doesn't mean the exercise themselves, but ones that are pretty similar in their movement pattern. Next, this is kind of a no-brainer, but bears mention that targets the muscles used in powerlifting and probably targets the ones that you want to bring up, right? There's powerlifters that for some reason do like a lot of vertical lat pulling and uh, a lot of like, you know, like flexion based ab work and a lot of like shoulder work, like side delt work and bicep work. And some powerlifters even train their calves. Like you can train your calves as a powerlifter, but you have to admit that's not really making you better at powerlifting. So a lot of the exercises that you pick should be targeting the muscles specifically that you want. So say, if I want a bigger chest for powerlifting, I got to do wide grip work and it's not an infinite number of variants. Here's the thing, in bodybuilding, a lot of times uh, in physique sport, when we do hypertrophy for that, you know, you can pick a huge variety of exercises. 
powerlifting narrows that down because we have very specific needs. Absolutely important to remember that. If you are a powerlifter and your training partner is a bodybuilder, there's going to be some exercises you have to do differently, right? Next, of course, as mentioned before, high stimulus to fatigue ratio. You don't want an exercise that beats the shit out of your shoulders, like super ultra wide grip bench. Let's say you do that, oh, very specific for the chest, which is true. Your shoulders get beat up like crazy. You're not getting a chest pump. That sucks. You want to narrow your grip, maybe arch a little bit more. All of a sudden your shoulders feel great. And your chest is getting blown up. Now we're talking. So you still have to have that subjective judgment of exercises. This is why a lot of times really, really good coaches they don't write you a plan of verbatim exercises. They'll communicate with their client to see, okay, which exercises work best for you to stimulate your quads? And you'll say, leg extensions I love. I love leg presses, hack squats, and high bar close stance squats. And they'll be like, all right, which one of those is more specific to powerlifting movements? We'll say we're going to use hack squats and high bar close stance squats. Boom. That's how you do it. A lot of times, if a coach writes an exercise down, it turns out it's not high stimulus to fatigue ratio for that client, it might not work out so well. Lastly, you want a little bit of diversity within the week. Uh, a lot of times it's to push one muscle ahead while the other one has to a little bit. So for example, the average routine for just general hypertrophy for bench pressing, you will have one of the days focused heavily on chest. Thus, these are like you know, wide grip benches and wide grip uh, incline bench, stuff like that. And another day in which the pushing exercises are more for the triceps. So maybe instead of wide grip uh, flat bench and wide grip incline, you would have close grip uh, bench flat, and then you could have like a JM press and stuff like that. That trains the triceps more, the chest a little less, gives the chest time to breathe until next week when the chest is hit again. So give that some thought. You don't necessarily want the same exercise over and over. It's also a lot of wear and tear that happens. So like a good thing for powerlifting is like high bar narrow stand squats one day, high bar wide stand squats the next day, or medium stands, or front squats, so on and so on and so on. You don't necessarily want to do all the same stuff. You can repeat the same exercises week to week, but you don't have to. And if you try repeating them and it's getting really stale, try some variation. It's totally fine as long as those variation exercises still meet all these other criteria. And there's usually more than one exercise that does, so it's not a big problem. A great place to start, because you could be looking at this and be like, what the fuck, I got all these checklists, it's fucking science shit. Just start with your favorite exercises and then maybe change them, maybe alter them. And if they're working great, don't worry about it. Maybe you can experiment with movements you're not used to later when you get a little bit more comfortable with this approach to train. All right, so exercise selection, I'm not going to read these out. Feel free to pause the video at this point and just see the kind of stuff we came up with. Again, there's no religion, no dogma in here. These are just examples. If you actually run this program verbatim, it'll probably be a pretty sweet program because it's realistic. These aren't just like esoteric examples that don't work in real life. But again, you used to say, okay, we have high bar squats on Monday and then high bar good mornings. Can I replace the high bar good mornings with stiff legged deadlifts? Well, you go back up. Uh, to slide number seven or, or number four on here. And it's uh, it says, number four, exercise selection. Do stiff legged deadlift meet all those criteria? Uh, if the answer is yes, then absolutely yes. If they don't meet some or all of them, then you got some choices to make. All right. Loading range selection. Really simple. Best transfer of training to strength when you're using hypertrophy is the five to 10 range. It's a robust hypertrophy range and hypertrophy is most muscles. And it's really easy to transfer to strength. So after you finish hypertrophy phase doing sets of five to 10, you have a great strength phase set up because it's very close to the same loading range. If you do a hypertrophy phase of sets of like 15 to 20, geez, it takes your nervous system weeks and weeks and weeks, your technique weeks and weeks and weeks to get used to sets of three to six again. Fuck all that. So you can do up to sets of 12 reps-ish. And remember, none of this is hard lines. If you get great results from doing sets of four for hypertrophy, please, by all means, have my blessing. If you have no problem transferring strength with sets of 15 on some of the assistance exercises, totally cool. Just be realistic and start in the moderate range and only expand the range or contract the range if that's what is needed in your training through that feedback process. So... Isolation style moves, you can do up to sets of 12, potentially more if you need to, um, especially if you get a better stimulus to fatigue ratios. For example, if you're doing lateral raises just for general shoulder strength and size, just a bit at the end of your program, and you're doing sets of 10 and you're just like, my fucking shoulder joints hurt. This is dumb. Sets of 10 with laterals, fuck that. You try sets of 12 or sets of 14 or 15, and it's just amazing burn, amazing pump, tons of tension in your delts. Your joints feel great. Just do that. And the transfer of training won't be as easy, but it's worth it because the stimulus to fatigue ratio is. Of course, as far as putting them together in your program, almost always, especially in powerlifting application, 
You want the heaviest stuff first. So if you've got like three or four exercises you're doing, and some of them are in like the five to eight rep range, some of them are in the eight to 10 rep range, some are in the 10 to 12, and you've got one at the end that you really like to do sets of like 12 to 15 with, then it's going to be in that order, heaviest to lightest. You don't want to do it the other way around almost ever. If you guys watch some of my Instagram videos of me lifting, I'll do the reverse order all the time because I'm a little bitch bodybuilder now, not a power lifter. Don't do that for power lifting. It's not the best idea. Absolutely, because it doesn't allow you to produce the highest levels of tension at the most productive volumes, which is exactly what you want to do for a power lifting strength based hypertrophy plan. So loading range selection, just a sample, feel free to pause, take a look at what we did. And some of the illustrations there, like the kind of exercises that you would typically load lighter or heavier appear as lighter or heavier. All right, relative effort. So how hard are we going to be training at least in the first week? People ask this all the time, should I be using RP or RIR, especially in powerlifting hypertrophy? Because they know that hypertrophy work a lot of times uses reps in reserve. Powerlifters often use RPE. You really can just do whichever one. It's totally preference. And if you're not sure, try both, right? Try both, no big deal at all. Especially if you're doing no more than 10 reps per set, five to 10, the RPE and RIR is almost literally the same thing. If you start doing sets of 12, 15, the RPE starts to be more of a guess. If you're comfortable with that, great. If you want to use RIR, totally fine. The thing about using RIR is it's awesome for the set, sets of five to 10. It's probably a little bit better than RPE, but then you pay the cost of transitioning modes of autoregulation when you go into your strength phase. So if you're used to RPE and you get like, because RPE takes a while to get used to, if you're used to RPE and in your hypertrophy phases and then your strength phase starts and you're in RPE again, Fucking sweet. If you do reps in reserve, RIR for hypertrophy phase, and then you start your strength phase, and it's like, oh, fuck, because RIR doesn't really work well with strength. If you do RPE, and you're like, fucking RPE, well, what the fuck? Like, you got to relearn some shit. So it's totally fine to just do RPE the whole time. But if you want to do RIR, totally cool. As far as effort, okay, where do you want to start? What RPE, what RIR? Well, you want to start every mesocycle at a relative effort that gives you easy gains, so you don't have to grind at first. There's no reason because you get easy gains from just doing minimum RIR or RPE, minimum relative effort. You want to build momentum. So you don't want to like try your hardest at the beginning, gas out with high fatigue and then stop. So you want something nice and easy at first and you want a low injury risk. Your first, your hypertrophy phase, you may be coming off an active rest phase. You don't want to just get in there and start going, you know, RPE 9.5 right away. You want to start on the easy side. What does that mean? Working sets in week one should be around seven RPE, three RIR, same thing. And then you work off of that later. We'll talk about that in our next video. How do you know what loads those are? Experiment by warming up to them. Try a working set. If it's way outside of the rep range that you planned, alter the load. And a lot of times as you train longer and longer and you know your strength better and you have previous hypertrophy phases off of which to base your loads, it's real easy to pick a load that takes a real good shot at RP7 or 3 RIR. Uh, and then you know like, okay, that's roughly 410 to 430 pounds. I'm going to guess 420. And then I do a set. I'm like, eh, it was really like 425 would be better because that was kind of like an RP6. You do sets of 425. And then next week is easy because it goes from there. So, so that's really the answer there. A lot of people ask a ton of questions and they're really good questions about like, okay, I know what RIR or RP should I hit, but how do I know what loads do that? There's no replacing knowing your past training, warming up in that session, and trying to hit your first work set at a reasonable guess. If the guess is wrong, you adjust up or down, depending on how you need to. If the guess is right, you just keep lifting that same load, no big deal. So the only change here is this RIR is filled in as three RIR for everything, because I wanted the sample program to be something you guys might be able to print out on your printer, nobody does anymore, screenshot with your phone and take to the gym and potentially actually use. So, so there it is. Now, what about initial volume? Like, okay, we have all the details set in place, except like how many sets of shit are we actually going to do? Because it's a pretty good question. Well, you want to choose working sets in the first week to do a couple of things. First, you want to be training hard. And the way we sort of quantify that in powerlifting hypertrophy is like, you're going to be tired at the end of your session. So if there is no considerable drop in function and strength in the target muscle or movement at the end of the session, you probably just didn't train all that hard. Like, if you come in and you're training quads that day, like high bar squats and stuff, 
And at the end of the session, someone's like, quad's pretty beat up. You feel it. The only right answer is at least like, yeah, no, definitely. Like my quads took a hit. If someone's like, well, how do your quads feel? And you're like, I'm like warmed up now. It's probably not enough volume. Assuming your relative effort is high enough. Maybe you're just cheating on that. But if you're training hard per set, you should do enough sets to where you're like, yep, I feel it. And then stop. Okay, just, just there, just the first degradation of function. But if you can consistently, you know, just go set after set after set and you feel 100% fine, mm, you probably need more sets, right? Another proxy, which we don't want to lean too heavily on, so it's mostly the fatigue thing that we detect, local fatigue. But if you're getting a decent pump, you can probably stop. Like if you do three sets of wide grip bench and your pecs are like pretty pumped, it's probably a good idea to stop because if you keep going, you can run into too much volume. What does that mean? Well, you don't want to do this many sets. You don't want to get super sore and not heal on time for your next session, okay? If you do a bunch of pressing and your chest and triceps get really sore on Monday and then Thursday you have another pushing session and they're still sore, soreness reduces maximum force production in many cases. And also it, because it's literal damage, it increases your chance for injury in that session. That's two things you absolutely fucking don't want. So make sure you're healing on time. So stop early. The worst thing that can happen is week one, you do not enough sets and you never get sore. Then in week two, you can go up and, and do more sets because you know you're well within your recovery. Guessing on the other end, doing too much fucks up your workouts afterwards and you have to take light sessions or recovery sessions or modify your sessions or just take the risk face on. That's not great. So err on the side of less. And not just soreness, but strength. Like you can do lots of sets of deadlifts, never really get sore anywhere, but you're so beat up systemically that the next time you do deadlifts, you're just, you just can't recover. Like, ah, I shouldn't have done eight sets of deadlift last time. Well, maybe stop at five and then that won't happen. So by the time you deadlift heavy next, you're super recovered and you're stronger. Critical for powerlifting. In hypertrophy training for pure physique, we can make some kind of at least decent argument that even if you're not at your strongest, you can still signal a hypertrophy response, but that has a lot of its own problems with it. It's certainly not sustainable long-term, but a couple workouts here and there where you don't hit your biggest numbers, not a big deal, you probably still grew. With powerlifting, because of the strength transfer, it's so important, like if you're not getting stronger every workout, even in your hypertrophy phase, in that rep range of five to 10, five to 12, man, you're not doing yourself any good. So if you're so tired from doing so much volume that you're like, oh, I'm getting weaker, you're not supposed to get weaker in your powerlifting. Don't do that, okay? It's too much volume. And the bit of wisdom here is, I basically already said, start on the lower end of volume. You can always move up if it's not enough with really no downsides. But if you do too much, there's shit to fix, right? All right. So initial volume selection, sample. Well, what it could look like for a person getting into hypertrophy training. I'm not going to read these sets out, but like these are pretty decent to start. And if you try to run this as a program that you just want to try out, totally cool. Oh yeah, I guess you get a free program out of this whole deal. Yahoo, enjoy. So that's it. We have, if you look at that last number seven, you have sets, exercises, rep ranges, relative effort guidelines, and sample loads so you can see what that could realistically look like for someone of like this uh, example strength. You're onto something. You can do the first week of training like this. Now, the next video is gonna cover on what you do on progression. Yeah, first weeks are nice, but what about week two, three, four, five, et cetera? How do we do that? See you next time for the next video. Fuck. I like swallowed a fucking bird or something.